We'll wait for a couple people to join. So it's pushing the Facebook. How's it going, guys? Good. How's the work from home today? It had its moments of productivity. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wait for just a couple people to join us. Luke's with us. Yo. Hey, Luke. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, we'll just kind of cue into the conversation as we're waiting for a couple people. Um, today for the Data Live, we're joined by the creative team. Um, today we'll just be having a casual conversation about website design trends we've been seeing in, um, coming into 2020 and things we might see further into the year. So we have a couple of points we'll touch on. Feel free to leave comments, post questions if you'd like. We'll take about a half hour of your time so you can sit back and enjoy your Tuesday afternoon with us. Um, so my name is Paige Weisberg, if any of you out there don't know me. Um, I've been with Data for about seven years now, I think. So working with our creative team, have worked with a lot of fun clients um, throughout the years, um, from websites to traditional graphic design. And today I'm joined with the rest of our creative team uh, so I will have them start by introducing themselves and then we'll get more into our conversation. Kelly, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, I can do that. Hi, my name is Kelly Imholt. Uh, I've been with Data coming up to just about two years now. Uh, I have a little over 15 years of experience as a creative designer. Uh, most of that is in small agencies, both in the St. Cloud area and the Twin Cities. Um, I hopped into the industry right around the time that traditional print was really big, but it was really quickly transitioning to website marketing, digital marketing. Um, so that was something that I really um, developed early on in my career was starting to understand websites, um, development, programming, what that process looks like. Yet I found a lot of the traditional principles of design quickly translated over. Um, and I already had background in programming and stuff too. So I find website design and thinking strategically through an interactive experience to be some of my favorite things to do, as I like to combine both the digital side and the artistic side and see how those mesh together um, in the worlds of building brands. So that's what I enjoy. Brandon? All right, so I'm Brandon Cannell. Um, I've um, been with Data for coming up on almost a year now. Um, before that, I've racked up about seven years of um, uh, design experience, so I'm starting at, started at the St. Cloud Times, um, working with a lot of local uh, businesses. Um, I just recently came from Coburn's. Um, I like to work a lot more in more of like the interactivity. I like to do a lot more of the digital, um, a lot of the front end of the website facing stuff. I did a lot of WordPress site building back in my school years, so. A lot of that has really um, kind of helped me out with all the tech side of things. Great. And Shane, our newest member of our creative team. Yeah, yeah, I have a, I'm Shane, a senior design specialist. I'm fairly fresh here at Data, um, but uh, I come with uh, around 15 years of experience in print and web design. Um, worked with a lot of clients ranging from charities like food shelves and stuff to larger corporations in the retail kind of realm. Um, so yeah, I kind of usually lean towards more of a, a clean, simple design aesthetic with, uh, with the stuff I like to work with, um, but I'm happy to work on kind of grungy stuff too to, to shake it up a little bit. Yeah, every client is so different. Um, I feel like that's something that's that's nice about data. We get to work with a lot of different clients. Um, so we get to dabble in a lot of different design um, trends, a lot of just different graphic styles. So 
that'll be fun to talk about today as we get into some of the trends we're seeing. Um, to start the conversation off, one thing, when we think about website design trends, a lot of people skip right away to like the visual side of things, uh, but we wanna almost take it back a step to start with the foundation of the website. Um, if a lot of people out there are thinking about going into a new site, uh, a lot of times they think like, what's the new color I wanna use or what's the new template or style? Um, but a lot of it is just the groundwork of how we approach a website um, and really taking a step back and understanding just the structure, um, just from the website strategy perspective or to the navigation um, and the organization there. So that's something we wanted to dive into first. Um, something we're seeing a lot more. We do have an example site we're going to project, um, one that we worked with and actually Kelly was the kind of lead mastermind behind is the city of Sartell. So Kelly, do you want to talk a little bit about that one and just the strategy we put into it even before diving right into the design? Yeah, certainly. Um, so this is kind of a um, an interesting project to work on for sure. Um, this project early on had the challenge that the current site they had, um, so the site is for the city of Sartell. So it both, you know, works as a tool for the local government, but it also works as a tool to promote the area uh, to people that are looking to visit or plan events, that type of thing. Um, so it has a lot of purposes and the site they had, you know, over time had really exploded and grown and grown and grown. Mm -hmm. And it literally was, what was it, over 300 pages? I think uh, so. With a handful of those were actually redundant. You know, they had recreated a page, not realizing that they had multiples of the same page. They had the same purpose. So a lot of it went into looking at the existing architecture of the site. What, what's all there? Mm -hmm. What kind of information is there? And let's start to boil this down. Let's think through strategically, how can we organize a site so we can bring it back to something that's approachable and basically the site itself is a useful tool for the many audiences that it has. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is a site that's a little more complex than I would say a lot of our web projects are because it mm -hmm. is having a lot of audiences. You know, there is just, just under government, there's a whole bunch of different departments within the city government that this serves mm -hmm. as like their only web presence, um, as well as, you know, all the local utilities and everything for local residents. And like I said, they, they really wanted to push promoting the area. So kind of a visit Sartell type of vibe that promoted the park, mm -hmm. recreation, reasons you should come check it out if you aren't already here, um, living here. Um, yeah. so, so we, you know, took a look at the pages. Um, we did a bunch of research of other local city or other city sites that were doing something similar, they were doing it well, so we kind of used that as inspiration. Um, and then we, you know, when we're gonna talk more about this, about minimal navigation and how that's become a really important element with modern web design, you know, my big thing is like, your, your main navigation should probably have at most like six items. And the reason for that is, when I land on this website, I want to quickly understand what is the site's purpose? What's it for? Is this where I'm supposed to be? And if so, like, what are my options? What paths can I travel down? And you start to get more than six up in a navigation bar. Um, it's hard to scan. It's too many things to take in. So going with that is kind of one of our main goals from a layout and inner, like a user accessibility side. Mm -hmm. um, we started to naturally break this into six different buckets, essentially. So again, this is before we're even thinking visually or anything like that, you know, thinking through it strategically. Um, and naturally that built the architecture of the site. So you're looking at like around Sartell, residents, visitors, government, businesses, and resources. Um, mm -hmm. kind of main buckets. And you can see some of those drop downs have a lot of items under them. But this helped us right away organize. So you know, like, you know, I am a resident, I'm looking for something probably related to a need I have as a resident. I know to go to that drop down right away and I can start to look for things. Or I'm looking for something about a local government department, I'll go under government. So right away, it starts to create natural paths of the experience. So again, this site is still almost 100 pages. Um, mm -hmm. So it still had to house a lot of information. We couldn't just cut it and get rid of it. Um, it still needed to, you know, have all this information, but be approachable. Yeah, one thing I would even add to that, um, 
as something I would challenge people who are going into a new website to think about is um, just because your internal services, um, you know, whether you're a school, um, a city government, or just like a B2B business, uh, your services don't have to be presented on your website the same way you work with them internally. You know, think about it from the viewer's perspective. Um, where will they, where are they looking for that information? Um, just because one individual at an organization works with a couple different services might not mean that those should all uh, be presented together in the same section of the website. So I think that's one thing we definitely did here is where is the viewer looking for that information? Yeah. 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 So one thing you were um, going into is just minimal navigation. And, and that's a huge trend. Uh, I feel like in the past you'd see these massive menu bars with like, you know, full width, you have like 12 headlines on it. Um, and now you're seeing even big companies like, you know, even like Apple or Google, they're really streamlining it down to that best practice of six or even less. Um, that we see a lot with the city of Sartell. Uh, we also try to do that with any other website we work with. Yeah, the other portion to keep in mind with navigation is, is mobile experience. Obviously, a huge thing now. Um, you can have easily half or more than half of your users looking at your site on a mobile device. So when I you know, hit that menu button on, in, on my phone, I want to be able to easily start to navigate through if mm -hmm. I got to be scrolling on my screen to go through the 12 or 20 options, that just gets overwhelming really fast. So again, trying to break it down into categories that make sense. And like you said, generally the website's serving like that customer, that client, mm -hmm. the public, you know, as opposed to internal, sometimes it can serve like an internal audience also, but definitely think about audience when you're thinking about the way you're structuring the site. Well, how mm -hmm. would they, of it, how would they approach it? And can they understand it without explanation? That's the other big thing. It should be yeah. intuitive that it just makes sense. Yeah, at least to some degree, they can they feel confident enough to make it one of those selections and move ahead. Yeah, and I mean, viewers are smart too. They don't need to drop down under like an about us section and they don't need a headline for our vision, our mission, our history, you know, they'll know just to go to an about section to find that. So there's a lot of opportunity there where you can cut out all those additional sub headlines just to keep it really streamlined have you guys run into that a lot maybe not really <laughs> let somebody else chime in <laughs> i know i have i see that a lot um just on other websites i go to and i feel like that's kind of phasing out um having like a headline like a drop down section for every single piece of information. People know that you can find your mission somewhere, you know, your history somewhere on the about section. I feel like um, just that navigation in general is a trend to keep it really minimal. Plus like your homepage design, if you if something's really important, it should naturally guide people to those page sections. They shouldn't have to dig, dig for the content. Yeah, I think they, that's another way. So let's say, well, I have more than six things or I've got those six buckets. Like, how do I feature this page or this promotion or this product? And I think a lot of that comes down to strategically thinking through that homepage experience because generally that's kind of the page that people land on. So that's so that starts to build out like your strategy for a homepage is mm -hmm. what is that featured content that should be on there? And it shouldn't just necessarily follow your structure of your navigation bar shouldn't just be those same links. It should be call outs of things that, you know, we have a big push on this product. That's what people are looking for. That should be right up there in the top of your home page. Mm -hmm. um, so thinking through that, that's a way to feature content where a specific content doesn't necessarily lend itself to a navigation item. Yeah. yeah. I think that really leads us to, to just minimalist design kind of in a whole or it really just kind of breaks us down kind of into exactly what, like what's the purpose of this homepage or the website? Just take the specific elements and then you can lead the user through the specific path. Um, that way it kind of um, keeps it more clean and simplified. And I think that, you know, goes with a lot of the design trends that lead into that too. Mm -hmm. It's a lot yeah, more we have an example um, on screen too that we can pull up 
of an InfoDNA Solutions website you did. Um, Brandon, if you want to talk a little bit more about just like the minimalist design there and um, kind of what we're seeing for trends in, in that area. Sure. So um, there's a lot more uh, white space. You can see there's a little bit more, um, a lot more use of color. Um, like, yeah, and I can talk a little bit about this because I, you know, I actually worked with this project. Yeah, Kelly, you talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so one of the big goals for this client in this site is they were in um, a brand, kind of establishing their brand. So they have a new logo, they're a newer company, and they're looking to kind of establish who they are as a company. So this homepage has more of a positioning statement there up at the top. Kind of that's their statement um, that they wanted to run with. And then, you know, you've got the tunnels that kind of lead you to kind of key elements. And this site's pretty simple already. So we're not looking at a lot of different call outs of content throughout the site, but um, kind of the nature, they didn't have photography that naturally lends to what they do. So kept it more geometric, you know, naturally adopted a minimalist design. Mm -hmm. And there's only one clear headline at the top as well. Um, mm -hmm. Very clean. Yeah, I mean, the minimal design kind of branded what you were going into saying, like, there's very much it's minimal but it's i think people think of they don't want like a boring website but minimal can still be very visual by bringing in like these gradients um we're seeing a lot of like soft drop shadows throughout even kind of like what kelly did here with the design you know it's not the elements aren't crowded around everything else it's not fighting for the user's attention um but it's having those like bold pops of color yeah, that's something that I've definitely seen with minimalist design, I think when it goes wrong, is it's oversimplified and generic. That can definitely happen. Um, I've seen some things like the new Facebook design, the uh, the new Slack design, or a teamwork updates, where so they've taken elements out of the layouts and it actually makes it a little harder to clearly identify elements in it. So I think there's, there's definitely an aspect where it's like, we just made everything white and all the text is black and now we're very minimalist. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you lose identity, you can lose readability. Um, often in my designs, I find when I'm doing kind of a, kind of a section on a section, so rows of content, I'm thinking at some point, so you're gonna have like the black text on the white, but you're gonna reverse. As you see here, I have a dark mm -hmm. background, I've reversed the content out of the next section is the opposite. So you kind of get naturally elements appear different from one another. So they're different thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's a way that I kind of encapsulate thoughts by inside of a design. I'm, I'm kind of looking at mm -hmm. that. Also reversed um, text and things. So white on a dark background, it's a little easier on the eyes. It's less light that's shining into your face. So that's something to keep in mind. A lot of middle designs are very white heavy and that can be very like uh, abrasive. <laughs> You know, sometimes using soft grays and things can help with that. Yeah. Well, and Shane and Brandon, you both like using a lot of color, um, but or you both like kind of that minimal design aesthetic, but you can still bring in like a yeah. lot of color through it too. Yeah. Just because it's called a white space doesn't mean it has to be white. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can use other color. Color is a great way to capture brand and different feelings and tones for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else just on the like minimal? I'm just gotta keep in mind when you like the example you have up on screen there with the white font over the darker background. Sometimes the the white font can seem a little bit smaller when it has a darker color around it. Mm -hmm. So you gotta keep a font that's a little bit larger, you know, something that's readable, but again, not too large. That you know, like we talked about already, with mobile. You know, you don't want something that fills up an entire phone screen with text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and that actually is kind of a good segue into the next trend we're seeing just with homepage hero formatting. Um, you know, a lot of people in the past loved their sliders. Uh, sliders aren't super effective because most people see the first one and then they scroll by. Um, but Shane, like you're saying, just really focusing in on a singular, um, a singular message that translates really well to mobile. Um, this other website I'm pulling up, platform three. I mean, that has a very like singular message in the hero image here. 
Um, yeah, just uh, I'm just going to interject quickly, Paige. Yeah. What we're talking about now is we call the hero or the hero banner on a home page. So that's that kind of first section that you see underneath the navigation. Just, you know, non-design folk don't always know what that means. We say, well, yeah. the hero, you know, the hero banner. So it's that big section you're going to yeah. usually see at the top of the home page. So it's that yeah, big or, yeah. Or the above the fold, you'll hear a lot um, yeah. of the reference. But this is something I would say, this trend can can appear very visually different no matter you know, what website you are, but it's just, it doesn't have to be something that's always flashing. It can be very singular. So Shane, as you were saying, like this trans translates well to mobile um, because you can adjust the font size, you can adjust the image. Um, a lot of times moving banners can size down really poorly to mobile, at least that's what I've seen. Um, so it can take a lot of tweaking to work on mobile. Yeah, have you guys seen with a lot of the sites you've worked on? Are you are you leading leaning more towards kind of the singular messaging hero image formatting, or what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think so. I think so. The, the sliders definitely don't work that well on mobile. Um, in the websites I've done, I usually deactivate them on mobile and, and end up doing a single image if I can. Talk the client out of a, of a slider, and they, they feel like they have to have one or two messages that you know cycle through. Um, I'll usually limit it down to one on a mobile. Just it's just not mm -hmm. appealing to to see that on a on a small phone cycling. Mm -hmm. Brandon, is that something you you tend to do a lot as well? Yeah, I think. Um, the one thing that I try to always do is um, focus on the mobile a lot because I think that's where the majority of the attention is going to be um, on the website. I mean, I guess that really depends on who's the user. Um, mm -hmm. With B sites, it might not necessarily be um, mobile, depending on the company, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But generally, I think you really want to focus on how it's going to look when someone looks at it on your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that might be an interesting topic at some point to cover here is mobile first. You hear that phrase used, and do you follow that? Do you not? Um, I'd be curious to hear everybody's thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah that's, try to. <laughs> that's an interesting one because I feel like a lot of website trends don't always translate to mobile, though when we look at the analytics of sites we design, I mean, usually it's 60% of your traffic is on a mobile device. Um, I think it really depends on industry. I mm -hmm. find business to business sites, which most often I'm creating, have a lot less mobile traffic. So they're looking at like 30% and down. So it's overwhelmingly desktop. So that's kind of been my experience. Now retail brands have a lot more mobile traffic. Mm -hmm. Well, and where are people you know, accessing your information to? Um, is it more on the go? Is it more in the office setting? Kelly, like you're saying, if it's an yeah. industry where you are sitting down at a laptop or a desktop computer. Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot of what we're talking about does translate well to mobile, you know, being like the site strategy and really planning out your content, um, minimal navigation, minimal design, you know, focused homepage hero formatting. That's definitely something that can translate well. Mm -hmm. um, Another thing we're seeing in website trends is just the formatting of your website's messaging. Um, so one of that even just being like text size, I know that's something Shane, you've referenced um, right. you know, as being something you've seen a lot. Yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of websites out there that try to use incredibly large font or typefaces. Um, and that can look really cool, you know, when you're talking about a, a laptop or even a large desktop screen. Um, but again, we're talking about mobile and can't translate those large fonts down to such a small screen and still get that same impact. So, you know, talking about that mobile first idea, mm -hmm. you know, that in mind, how large is too large, um, you know, Sometimes the um, the headlines help guide the the viewer. You know, like, like uh, what Kelly was talking about with your navigation, the six across the top. Um, you can have a little bit larger headlines 
as you go down the page to help guide the viewer to what's important. Mm -hmm. But you also don't want to go too small. People can't read it. No. So I usually uh, pick around 16, 16 pixels or so as well as small as they like to go for, for a body text. It's just anything smaller seems to be like putting a piece of paper on the wall, 12 point font and you know, scrolling back from it and can't read it. Yeah. Visiting just general websites that you, you know, might hit on whether it's like a blog or um, I feel like a lot of um, like software websites utilize like bold text, large formatting, just to capture that attention. Um, yeah. If it fits well with your branding, I think it can be a really strong trend. Um, some of the clients we work with have very kind of stylized you know, types of fonts. So depending, some work better than others. So it's not, I, I don't think it's really a trend everybody should jump on, though it can, it can be successful um, if it's well done. Yeah, I think a key to using really large fonts is short phrases. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to see is a really long sentence in a really large font. Um, that, those two tend not to work well together, especially on mobile. You know, obviously you can scale the font size down for mobile, but I don't want to be scrolling to read some mm -hmm. long sentence that's in a giant bold font. You see it often used with very short, like three to four words, you'll see large fonts. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Very impactful. Yep. And again, that's something I think that the brand dictates. What's that brand aesthetic for the site? Mm -hmm. you know, does it really fit? Um, it, 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 you know, there's certain brands who do not want to appear bold in your face over the top aggressive, then you would not want to utilize really large fonts generally, right? If it wants mm -hmm. to be more calming, soothing, you know, you're going to find a different way to utilize fonts and typefaces. Do you guys, um, have you seen or run into times where it's almost like a singular brand is trying to hop onto every like hot website trend and it's almost like too much the least you know it's the least successful way to approach the website because you're trying to do way too many things in one mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I think that's when you have a lot of people involved generally mm -hmm. right like um you're trying to satisfy a whole bunch of design preferences in one design and that's where you have to be like willing to say like what is this aesthetic what is this brand what is it not that's mm -hmm. why you have to address it yeah. Yeah, I think that's a lot where it comes back to bringing up the whole point of the website and the goal is more like, yay, we can add all this fluff and animation and everything, but will that help you get leads or? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, animation in general, I mean, that's definitely a trend we've been seeing more and more of because it's become so much more um, easy for a lot of people with a lot of different web platforms to achieve, you know, whether you're on like a WordPress site or a more DIY like Wix website approach, um, all of them seem to have built in animations now. That's something that I feel like has been more of a trend though. You almost see, you see sometimes websites using it a lot, but it's, it, that's an interesting trend, I think, just because it, it can tend to slow down your website with the website accessibility, um, you know, all of that going on now. It's not good for those sorts of websites. What are your guys' uh, thoughts just on animation? Yeah, I agree. I, mean, I, I, I like animation on sites, you know, if it's, if it's a, a smaller, you know, very purposely designed, you know, that kind of can help lead a message. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll see that even just move it, movements in general, maybe not an animation, but like parallax and stuff like that. It's, it yeah. can make a minimal site look um, a little more impactful, a little more powerful. Um, but like you said, with the accessibility, I mean, it's, it's very visual. It doesn't lend to um, people with disabilities and, and accessing your site. And that can mm -hmm. be a, a large problem. Yeah. yeah I think as long as it's deliberate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I like subtle animation, unless there's there's a thought through, or like something you want to animate and that has like a kind of a presentation attribute to it, like we're gonna demonstrate something through this animation. But if it's bringing in content or graphics, I think subtle transitions are okay. 
The one thing you got to look out for is making sure that on mobile, that it's either turned off or that it works. Because I've definitely seen sites where it, it the the mobile uh, device renders the site differently and nothing animates in, so you have an empty page. Mm -hmm. so that's that's been an issue, and I think some of those platforms have fixed that since. But it, make sure you try it on an actual device. Is yeah. it pulling up? You know, does it look right? Um, there's ways to, like I said, disable it, but you just want to make sure. Obviously, first and foremost, you got to get your information displayed. It's got to work for the user. If you can accent it with animation, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I've run into that. that. Go ahead. I've, I've just seen that even on a desktop where it's not a single element on the site that animates, but it's the whole row. And then you scroll down and you think you're at the end of the page because the whole row is just waiting to animate in. And yeah. that that always trips me up. Yeah, <laughs> kind of going off of that, like the text, the people like to animate text. There's a lot of easy plugins and, and stuff built into WordPress now, especially, and you can text, but it, it a lot of times doesn't work on mobile. So then your headline is gone. And, and yeah. Now somebody doesn't know what that group of text is supposed to be really talking about. Yep, test, 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 that's huge. Like. <laughs> I make sure I run through every page on a site, like on a mobile device, a tablet, yeah. various desktop browsers, make sure all that stuff's working. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes clients won't understand why Why does a simple edit take take so long? Well, you want to look at it in a couple different browsers on a mobile, just make sure it works. You know, nothing more than too. launching something and, and saying it's done and it's not. Any... Um... Any other general trends you guys wanted to touch on before we wrap up this live session here? Um, you know, I talked a lot about strategy, navigation, just minimal design, kind of the above the fold formatting of your website, messaging trends, anything else you guys want to add? I think video is a big one you'll keep seeing just because video is easier and easier to capture and edit. Um, so it, it works nice, I think, when it's one you uh, have it set up properly that you're not loading a gigantic video into your site. Um, also, you got to keep in mind, I don't know if iOS has made some changes, but they don't autoplay video, or at least they didn't used to. So I, you know, mm -hmm. iPhones and things would get a really ugly big play button on that nice background and you know video you had. So mm -hmm. that's things to keep in mind. Again, mobile usability, um, keeping the file size down. Don't have text in the video underneath other headline text. Like yeah. don't run text over text in video. It's just, you know, things like that to be aware of. But I think you're gonna keep seeing video. It's a great way to showcase something that you can't like show in a still picture or even mm -hmm. an animation sometimes, how something works like a product or, so I think you'll should see like uses of small bits of video for things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. yeah, I like that one. Any other thoughts on what we see, where we see things going? I mean, design is, um, it's always been very subjective. Yeah. So, I mean, what's the trend now might not be later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost feel like trends now, a, a lot of what we're seeing has been, has been done, you know, in the past couple of years, it's just refining it, but Mm -hmm. It's almost like trends are moving more towards just the usability um, and things that are a bit more on the background and how those relate to what you see on the front of the website. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Yes. Sounds good. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We will I think we're good, so the, the live should should end soon, but hope you guys have a great afternoon. Yeah, yeah you as well. Hopefully it doesn't